You know, Americans have always been eternal optimists. But over the last three and a half years, we've seen hopes and dreams diminished by false promises and weak leadership. Everywhere I go, Americans are tired of being tired. And many of those who are fortunate enough to have a job are working harder for less. For every single mom who feels heartbroken when she has to explain to her kids that she needs to take a second job and won't be home as often. For grandparents who can't afford the gas to visit their grandchildren anymore. For the mom and dad who never thought they'd be on food stamps. For the small business owner desperately cutting back just to keep the doors open one more month to all of the thousands of good and decent Americans I've met who want nothing more than a better chance, a fighting chance. To all of you, I have a simple message. Hold on a little longer. A better America begins tonight. Tonight is the start of a new campaign to unite every American who knows in their heart that we can do better. The last few years have been the best that Barack Obama can do. But it's not the best America can do. Tonight is the beginning of the end of the disappointments of the Obama years. Four years ago, Barack Obama dazzled us in front of Greek columns with sweeping promises of hope and change. But after we came down to earth, after all the celebration and the parades, what do we have to show for three and a half years of President Obama? Is it easier to make ends meet? Is it easier to sell your home or buy a new one? Have you saved what you needed for retirement? Are you making more at your job? Do you have a better chance to get a better job? No. Are you paying less at the pump? No. You know, if the answer were yes to those questions, then President Obama would be running for re-election based on his record, and rightly so. But because he has failed, he will run a campaign of diversions and distractions and distortions. That kind of campaign may have worked at another place and in a different time, but not here. And not now. It's still about the economy. And we're not stupid. Now when it comes to the character of America, President Obama and I have very different visions. Government is at the center of his vision. It dispenses the benefits, borrows what it can't take, consumes a greater and greater share of the economy. You know, with Obamacare fully installed, government would have control of almost half of the economy and we would have effectively ceased to be a free enterprise society. This president's putting us on a path where our lives will be ruled by bureaucrats and boards, commissions and czars. He's asking us to accept that Washington knows best and can provide all. We've already seen where that path leads. It erodes freedom. It deadens the entrepreneurial spirit. And it hurts the very people it's supposed to help. Those who promise to spread the wealth around only ever succeed in spreading poverty around. Yeah. Other nations have chosen that path. It leads to chronic high unemployment, crushing debt, and stagnant wages. I have a very different vision. I see an America with a growing middle class, with rising standards of living. I see children even more successful than their parents, some successful even beyond their wildest dreams, and others congratulating them for their achievement, not attacking them for it. This America is fundamentally fair. We will stop the unfairness of urban children being denied access to the good schools of their choice. We, we will stop the unfairness of politicians giving taxpayer money to their friends' businesses.
We will stop the unfairness of requiring union workers to contribute to politicians not of their choosing. We will stop the unfairness of government workers getting better pay and benefits than the very taxpayers they serve. And, and we will stop the unfairness of one generation passing larger and larger debts on to the next. And as I look around at the millions of Americans without work, the graduates who can't get a job, the soldiers who return home to an unemployment line. It breaks my heart. This does not have to be. It's the result of failed leadership and a faulty vision. We will restore the promise of America only if we restore the principles of freedom and opportunity that made this nation the greatest nation on earth. Today, the hill before us is a little steep. But we've always been a nation of big steppers. Many Americans have given up on this president, but they haven't ever thought of giving up, not on themselves, yeah. not on each other, and certainly not on America. In the days ahead, join me. Join me in the next step toward that destination of November 6th, when across America we can give a sigh of relief and know that the promise of America has been kept. The dreamers can dream a little bigger. The help wanted signs can be dusted off. We will stop the days of apologizing for success at home and never again apologize for America abroad. There was a time not so long ago when each of us could walk a little taller and stand a little straighter because we had a gift that no one else in the world shared. We were Americans. That meant something different to each of us, but it meant something special to all of us. We knew it without question, and so did the world. Those days are coming back. That's our destiny. You see, we believe in America. We believe in ourselves. Our greatest days are ahead. We are, after all, Americans. God bless this great nation. God bless the United States of America. And God bless you good people. Thank you so much.